Yes, 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 who got brands talking? Brandlive.co.za. Good morning. Uh, you're listening to The Weekly with me, Sam Marshall. And as you know, on a Tuesday, we engage with authors. And this week, it's no different. I've got Jan Waratunga in studio with me. And she's the author of the Polly series. A little bit later, we'll find out a little bit more about Polly. We'll get introduced to Polly. And we'll talk to Jan about some of the other interesting stories that she's busy crafting as the creator. Or maybe we'll even have a discussion whether she's the creator of the stories or the stories are sitting there and she is uh, maybe lucky enough to, to grasp onto them. Jan, thank you very much uh, for joining me on The Weekly. Hi Sam, nice to meet you. Let's talk about Polly because for me, um, I read through the books and as uh, we were discussing before we started on air, uh, when I read it to my kids, uh, there was a lot of life lessons. How did the Polly series come about? Okay, well I actually wrote the third book first. <laughs> um, how Polly became um, a pirate is actually uh, a subsequent book. Um, Polly's Paralympics was all about um, Polly, the character, yeah. and how she comes up with the idea of uh, Paralympics yeah. for pirates. Um, they all have one eye, one arm, one leg, and as we know, Paralympians also have, have various disabilities similar to that. And then I had an eight-year-old ask me, well, where does Polly come from? Is she real? So how Polly became a pirate um, came along, and then Polly and Egg can fly. Yeah, but I mean, as a as an author, I mean, we're debating whether we call you a children's author, or, but you also do poetry and do a lot of a lot of other stuff. You could have really chosen any animal. Um, you're creative enough where you could have had, for argument's sake, hippie, the hippo, or whatever it may be. But what was it about birds that attracted you and that you, you thought to yourself, if I could write the story, craft it really well, that there's something really friendly about using um, a bird, a bird, um, and, or, and using that as the main theme and thrust for my stories and then crafting this really, crafting really clever social commentary. Um, for example, little things like, you know, and, and um, how Polly became a pirate, uh, you talk about issues of poaching. Yes. And so there's some real issues. You talk about issues of orphans. Yes. There's a, a abandonment issues. There, There's just so many different things that you kind of weave through quite cleverly. And I'm sure somebody, when if you're, if you're a parent that's astute to what's happening in the world, it's the kind of things you pick up. When, when did you decide that Polly was going to be a bird? Okay. Or was Polly always going to be a bird? Well, basically, I started actually with the, the, the pirates. So Philip Craven, uh, in yeah. his closing speech of the 2012 Olympic Games, um, the Paralympics, he actually was discussing about a mother and son reading a book, which happened yeah. to be Treasure Island, and how, you know, the mother said to the boy, well, who's this character? And the character had one eye, one arm, one leg. So the boy said, well, Ma, he's got one eye, one arm, one leg. He must mm. be a Paralympian. And that actually gave me the idea for the first book. Okay. And you can't have pirates without... <coughs> yes, Polly. <coughs> no, we can, mm. without you. So along came Polly, yeah. and then from that, yeah. she developed as a stronger character, actually, okay. than, than the wow. pirates. They're her sidekick now. Sorry, Polly. <coughs> so you basically, you weren't the original star of the series. And oh, then you no, look, and then you I became you. Now the you've upset series. her. But you, you acted and performed everybody. So Polly then resonates really strongly yep. and yep. she really becomes the, the kind of main thrust for your stories and, and the main um, antagonist. How do you then decide that, because you, you want to write a story that, and I, and I think with authors, I don't know how they work, go about it, but how do you then blend the, the idea of fiction and crafting these wonderful worlds where Polly finds herself with her friends and then trying to put a moral issue or deal with a social issue. And for me, poaching is a really serious thing. And anybody who understands how it's decimating our wildlife, even from a fauna and flora perspective, right. how do you then, or do you stumble upon them? Or are they crafted on purpose? Do you know what? I find, I put my hands on the keys and the book actually writes itself. I, I was a Tolkien lover, and mm. when I read his works, I actually imagined myself to actually be in that world. And when I write my Polly books, it's almost as if I'm in her world. 
I, I don't really know how else to explain it, but but her world becomes real around me. The jungle suddenly grows around my study. Mm. My books disappear, and 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 wherever Polly is, suddenly becomes alive around me. And and when I'm writing in that sort of mode, the story just writes itself. Mm. The issues. They're around us all the time, and I don't believe that we should wrap children in cotton wool. Mm. They need to know what's happening in their world, because let's be honest, it, they are our future. They're the ones that are going to stop us from destroying the world. So if, if we don't start addressing things with them as children, mm. it's too late by the time they're adults, because they've already got very firm opinions on things. If you start talking to children about litter, and why do we not throw litter, or animal poaching, especially for us here in South Africa, rhino poaching, which is absolutely major. And in fact, the seventh book, which I'm writing at the moment, Polly returns to Africa and she comes back here specifically to meet up with Leo the lion and Richard yeah. the rhino and her friends and talk about rhino poaching and elephant poaching. It's so funny that you talk about, about her returning to Africa because there is a moment when um, they're on board the ship and they see land. Yes. And for a brief second, Polly's wondering if that's where her parents are. Yes. And, and yet again, it comes back to me for, to a social issue because we are faced with orphans and we are faced with, with children that are abducted and all of those kind of things. Yes. And if you, if you put Polly into that context, it's a really serious issue. It is. It is. And, and you want children to understand these things. You want them to understand that, you know, when mum and dad say to you, do not go with a stranger, you do not go with a stranger. So I actually put that into my books. I weave that in through the books so that you're basically talking to the children almost on a subliminal level and, 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 and making them understand, you know, what mummy and daddy say is, is something we have to listen to, what we're learning at school. These are things we have to listen to because it's important and it could actually save our lives. Yeah. I, I want to talk more about the interaction with the children and I know you, you travel to schools and I know you interact with kids uh, in a first-hand experience. I want to talk about that a little bit later. But I just want to backtrack very, very quickly with this love affair with Polly because ah. Polly wasn't part of your vision because you, you technically... You were living in Sri Lanka for a long time. I was. And was Polly part of your vision then? Or? Uh, no. I, I've been here in South Africa for 12 years now. And as I say, Polly actually just popped into my head mm. in 2012. I know you were already around. Yes. No, but you, you actually came to me, yes, to write the book. Yes. So... Sorry, she, she's quite vocal yeah, at yeah, times. Yeah, vocal. Yeah. And she goes into schools and she we'll, chats we'll to kids as well. We'll have a conversation with Polly a little bit later. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so it, it actually came to me through living in, in, in South Africa. You know, okay. I've been down, obviously, to Durban and to the coast where we have parrots and, and, and the likes. Mm. So it was sort of, well, how can, I, how can I make this story come alive? You know, I don't want to use characters that, that are fictitious. I want to use characters that children can relate to. And they can relate to birds. I mean, yeah, yeah, no, true. You know, they, they know how what the old is, look like. How old are you, by the way, Polly? You're not telling. Why? I, I know you're a female. A woman you never tells her age. I know. I but was, I'll let you know. I was, I was, I was trying she, my luck. She's there. actually two. She's two. She's actually okay. two. So you then, so Polly's born out of the South African experience. Yes. Um, but how much of your other experiences? having lived around the world, having lived in Sri Lanka for so for so long, how much of that is kind of thread through the Polly stories? And I know there's a host of other stories, but we're not really talking about the toucan and the yeah. other and the other birds. We we're focusing on you because you're the star. Um but how much of that is thread through because they they for example, I'll 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 tell you the reason I asked that question. Because there's a particular way Captain Hake speaks. Yes. You know? Yes. And so you would only I don't think you can write it if you haven't Spoken or experienced it. Right. Am I wrong? You, no, you, no, you're not wrong. Captain Hake and his crew are all from Scotland. Okay. So obviously they have this sort of Scottish twang yeah. that runs through um, the format that I've used for writing for them. Yeah. Um, likewise, the turbaned Indians are from India, and there's a slightly different accent that comes through yeah. when they're speaking. The South Africans, likewise, the Maoris. So I've used my experiences around the world and also just having friends from different parts of the world mm. um, and also the locations. I mean, Polly starts in Africa, she ends up yeah, in Scotland, yeah. 
She, she goes travels to, more than a celebrity. She list. goes to Treasure Island. She goes to yeah. Snowy Island. She goes to Ireland. Mm. She goes to Scotland. She she's back in Africa, back in South Africa. She will be going to the Middle East. She will be going off to India. Find she will peace be going, in the Middle East. Yeah. So so her stories are actually yeah. going to take her and her crew around the world and by doing that you're also introducing children to other places in the world and making them look outwards rather than always inwards mm. so they understand the world is actually a very big place but it's quite small as well yeah you know when i read a book i like to think of all the little bits and i always i always try and put myself in the well it's impossible to put myself in the author's shoes but i always like to i like to think why is polly a girl as opposed to Polly being a boy, because you've okay. got Tukani the Tukan, who's a boy. Yes. And he's got a friend, uh, Umpo, who's Umpo also a boy. Was a boy. Yes. Um, and in Polly's world, one of her friends is a rat. Yes. Right? And I assume he's male. He's Roger. Roger he's the Roger, Rat. Roger Correct. the Rat. But Polly's best friend, you could argue, is Captain Egg. Yes. Because they have this relationship. And Correct. Polly's more than just, she's practically the first mate, if not. She's like the first man. I think she actually runs the ship on, on the quiet. The ship. Why is why the decision to make Polly a female? Um, because because I, I know we're being forward, and I don't know if I'm asking you, in a very funny way, but she's practically the only female on the ship. Well, she is until the fifth book. Okay. Okay, I only have three in front of you. You have three in front of you, yes. Yeah. But uh, come the fifth book, there's actually a new crew member, Red. Okay. And Red is a young girl. Okay. Um, and then they become good friends as well. Okay. But, but her best friend, yeah, no, is always going to be Captain Hake. She loves yeah. Captain Hake. So. But no, um, bringing a, a female bird in, as I said to you, the, the books sort of write themselves. And okay. it just seemed... It natural. just seemed natural, yes. Yeah. I mean, it, I, I didn't even think about her being a boy okay. at any point in time. But to Kani, immediately I created the character, he was a boy. Okay. And Umpo, his friend, was also a boy. So For me, that's quite interesting because it, Polly basically started off as not even the, the main character in the story. Mm -hmm. And then eventually grew to become the main character. Yeah. And so that was an organic um, process. Where Takani is a structured process, what changed? Or um, was that the evolution of a writer? I think I think your writing does change. Okay. Um, I think your writing style to a degree changes as well, and you develop as a writer. Um, the the idea of Takani being structured, it's not really, the character maybe was structured, like I actually saw him in a pet shop. Okay. Um, well, actually, toy shop, but okay. pet shop. And, and as soon as I saw him, I knew he was a boy and I knew I wanted him and I knew I wanted to write a series of books around him. Okay. Um, with, with Polly, I had actually written the books and then I discovered Polly. And, okay. and I, I saw her. And you, then you obviously have to rejig the book, right? No, I didn't. I didn't rejig the book at all, actually. Oh, okay. um, she just fitted into wow, the character okay. perfectly. So. That's quite interesting. So yeah. you, as you were going through this process, you discovered a... A, a character in the book that just stood out above everybody else. Yeah. Well, I had a, I had a young eight-year-old that, that had read Polly's Paralympics, which, as I said, is now the third book, but originally the yeah. first book. So the other two books are actually the origin stories of Adam. They're actually the origin stories of Polly, yeah. because he yeah. came up to me and he said, you know, is Polly real? You know, where, where does she live? And so um, I suddenly thought, well, okay, where does Polly come from? And it made me start thinking. And, and then I wrote the pre prequels, which are the two little books. And so, yeah, that's how it all started. Okay, we're about to take an ad break here on the weekly. When we come back, we'll delve a little bit more into the Polly stories. We'll also have a chat to you, uh, Polly herself. And uh, we'll find out what else is on the horizon. I've got three books in front of me. There's apparently another four. So we'll talk about those two. Brandlive.co.za Have you ever thought about the power of social media? Social media has the power to make your business grow. Grow! Why don't you let us manage your social media? Because our business is to see your business grow. Visit us at www.beastownmedia.co.za I'm <laughs> sorry. 
Guess, guess, guess who got brands talking? Brandlive.co.za. Welcome back. We're in studio with Jan Waratanga. I said the name, said him perfect earlier. Now I'm struggling. Waratunga. And uh, she's written a series called um, Polly the Pirate. Well, Polly is a pirate. And she's written, uh, I'm going to try and say this, Polly and they can fly. Polly Paralympics, um, and then there's How Polly Became a Pirate. Polly and Nay Can Fly, and How Polly Became a Pirate is actually the origin story to Polly's Paralympics. Jan, uh, before the break, we talked about just kind of the influences and, and uh, why Polly ended up being a female. Um, when, when, you, when you're writing kids' books, and, 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 uh, and as for somebody who does poetry, who does other stuff, do you go into a different space because it's got to be well for kids it's got to be a little bit sanitized and the story's got to be warm and it's got to resonate um there's a couple of different maybe elements that you need with kids stories that you don't necessarily need with a thriller or horror and stuff do you am, am i right when i when i when i phrase it like that do you go somewhere or like you said, you just put your hands on a keyboard and you're gone. Well, no, you go somewhere, definitely. Your whole okay. mindset changes. You you hear the story in your head. Mm. You, you can see it, you can visualise it, you can feel it. And I think to actually get inside your characters, you have to be able to do that. You have to know what Polly is thinking for Polly mm. to be able to speak. You have to know... Mm. what your 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 pirates are going to do next for the, for for you to be able to write well mm. um and but one of the things i i don't do is i don't talk down to children i don't believe okay. in baby talking children you know because the themes are very adult it's not necessarily um bestie best friend it's this is serious yeah. issues yeah no i don't believe in as i say baby talking children yeah. you know this 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 doggy woggy and all that stuff i i don't do that it's a mm. dog it's a cat it's a parrot it's a macaw it's a whatever um i i, I think children learn best when they learn it once off yeah. and then they've got brain cells to learn something else and not waste on on, on that sure. um and i also believe that you know children if they, if they can say tyrannosaurus rex at the age of four and I can guarantee you can go to any four-year-old and ask them to say that word, and they can say it. So if they can say that word, then the words that I've used in these books, they can learn yeah. to say. And, and that way also, you're developing the child's language, you're developing their ability to, 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 to actually speak, really. Yeah. And then before I have a chat to Polly, there's uh, maybe apart from the kind of themes you talk about, You've also made the book um, instructional in a way, so that when people interact with the book, that there, there, are, there are ways other than the content to engage with them. Yes, yeah. I think we had a little chat before, yeah. and I was saying, you know, you get a car, you get an SUV, and you get a crossover. Yeah. And then you, you get a picture book, you get a chapter book. And this, I believe, is my crossover. Okay. It's where at the end of each chapter, we have like a little interactive page where I ask the children questions yeah. or I ask them to draw a but picture. Draw a cabin. Or yeah, and I mean, one of the drawings that came back to me from one young man and his dad had read the book with him because he happened to be a friend of mine back in the UK when I was mm -hmm. living there. And um, he actually drew a map on the pirates. He had to draw what he would look like mm -hmm. as a pirate. And he drew a map on his trousers. And his dad said to him, hey, son, you know, what's with the trousers? And he says, no, dad. I put the map there so I won't lose it. Okay. And I thought it was absolutely brilliant. But he's, he's interacting. It's stretching his imagination. Yeah. And isn't that what we should be doing at this age group in primary education? We should be encouraging imagination. And, and one of the things, I mean, throughout this interview, and I'm sure they'll see it in the, uh, in the video clip, is that the moment Polly's on your, on your, on your arm, you are, as you've been talking to me, constantly interacting with Polly. How does that help you make the character even more real? What, Polly? He thinks you're not real. Yeah, well, I mean, Polly, you are real, but I'm saying, <laughs> how does it help Jan when she's interacting? <laughs> Unfortunately, she's your translator. No, um, I, I think when when Polly goes onto my arm, it's almost like my sort of my ego. Alter ego. Alter ego sort of taking over and, and yeah. you know, there's a split. This is my ego, this is my alter ego. And, and, and 
she becomes real to me. And if I make her real to me, yeah. I can make her real to the children. Mm. So when I go into schools, I was in a school um, just before Christmas, just before we broke up there. And um, the headmaster, would, I'd gone back to visit him. And he said, no, 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 come into the classroom. So I went into the classroom and he went in. He said, oh, I've got somebody to meet you. And the kids were a little bit quiet. And then all I did was stick Polly's head around the corner. And they just erupted, it's Polly, it's Polly. And they all got up and they came running over to her. They're, she is real to them. Mm. Because she's real to them, they listen to what she has to say. So the social issues that I'm trying to get across, mm. the fact that we have islands of rubbish the size of Swaziland in the world, floating around in the sea, plastic that can kill our wildlife both on land <laughs> and in the air and in yeah. the sea it becomes real to those children because it becomes real they then want to do something about it mm. polly how do you how do you enjoy interacting with kids <laughs> okay she basically what she's saying is she loves being around the kids but she gets a bit frightened yeah, you get a bit frightened, don't you, when, when they're very noisy because, you know, she, she's just a little bird and, and, you know, lots of children making a lot of noise. Yeah, it can be a bit terrifying. So, so when they're a little bit quieter, she finds it much easier, but she likes them. Yeah, there's something interesting in um, how Polly became a pirate, um, that Polly has this ability, or maybe you can tell me, you have this ability where you're able to observe things that I don't think anybody else can. And one of the things that you observed when you guys were in the cages was the way the two-legged destroyers um, were, were feeding the animals. And based on that, you were able to save the animals, but then you were, you were a rogue. You know, at that stage, Polly hadn't got her feathers. She was a tiny little yeah. chick. But she has a bird's-eye view of things, so she sees mm. things from a different angle. And, and she's an intelligent bird. I mean, parrots actually live longer than we do. They're, yeah. they're very intelligent birds. So when you're getting one as a pet, you better make sure that you can be around for a long time. And and she, so she wanted to put the other animals before herself. Yeah. And also to teach us, you know, we put other people before ourselves. We're not yeah. always the first out of the cage and, you know, running down the corridor. She wanted to help them escape. Yeah. I, I think the, the other thing that you also do, do incredibly well, um, and especially when you're in that with, with kids, is that there's so much teachable moments in the book where all you actually have to do as a parent or the person reading it is they, they set up like markers in the book to say so it, like i gave you the example is it right to take is it right to take somebody what has been some of your interesting experiences at school okay it's actually just gone in as a set work in three in three schools recently um they're about to roll it out here in march and and the anti-bullying theme is the one of yeah. course the teachers like um, Polly gets very badly bullied. No, it's okay, Polly. They can't get you now. Mm -hmm. Nasty children go into the pet shop and they, they bully yeah. Polly. And I mean, that's the sort of situation yeah. which, which not just in the schools, but in everyday life. But I think when, bullies. when she was being bullied, her, her feathers were falling yeah, out and she was looking out. a bit yeah. um, She got mangy. very, very yeah. sad, as, as somebody does when they're being bullied. And Captain Hague was able to see past all of that. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he could see she was beautiful. Yeah. So and he wants. So you're talking to about inner that. beauty there too. Obviously, yes, yeah. yes. But there's lots of lessons in in the books. Yeah. You know, there's there's disabilities. She actually yeah. has. You know, she's born for with the, one the, eye. The funny the funny thing for me is, um, and I and I, I want people to buy it. So I don't want to give away too much. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing for me is that I'm not going to tell you what the, they eventually find a treasure map. They do. Right. That's at the end of Polly and they can fly. Correct. And they discover that the actual treasure is not what they thought it would be. Yes. Right? But then she obviously, in her clever way, finds a way to utilize that. Correct. Um, and for me, just by talking about that issue of disability, mm. um, I think we're breaking down stereotypes. We do all that. Because it's not, it's not as if the people that are disabled are not functional. Mm. Yeah, no, I mean, I actually chat with Natalie Tatoy, um, wow. and there's a, a young athlete, Noor, who's down in uh, Stellenbosch studying, um, and he's blind. And he and I actually met on Facebook, and one day we okay. were actually sort of saying, I said to him, but how can you read what I'm writing? He said, no, there's a special computer program 
that basically voices it for him so he can listen to it. And we ended up, we phone each other, uh, we chat on WhatsApp on a regular basis. And, and so getting to know these characters and, and people with disability, you know, they're, they're not to be kept in the cupboard. These are real people. Mm. They live with us. They're in our communities. We don't, we shouldn't be hiding people away and be ashamed of them. Mm. You know, they're amazing people with so much to offer and so much to teach us as well. So I like to have them as my, my friends and I like to have them as my characters. Do do you reference, especially when you're, or, or let me rather structure this way, when do you feel the need to reference any of your stories? In this case, you spoke to Natalie. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will only reference if I've used a particular conversation I've had with them. Okay. Otherwise, my characters are all fictitious. Okay. Um, but obviously, you know, you, you use a character that maybe has one leg and you've met somebody i mean i have a little girl in the school and she has a prosthetic leg and it's beautifully decorated with butterflies on it and and she's read my books and she came up to me she gave me a big cuddle and she says auntie thank you for writing this book for me mm. and there are twins one of them's deaf and they will be appearing in in the south african book so i'm starting to draw in the characters that, mm. and the people I'm meeting. Red is actually based on it, on, on somebody that I know. Um, mm. So you, you draw on obviously experiences and people you know, but you wouldn't directly quote. If you directly quote, then obviously you'll put a reference sure. in. But you know, you'll put thank yous in your um, acknowledgements um, mm. and dedications. So. We, we're, we're coming towards the end of our interview and uh, it's crazy how half an hour flies, but. <laughs> I, Sorry, excuse the pun. <laughs> excuse the pun. <laughs> you've got other books too that you've written and that um, we'll see the light of day pretty soon. The characters that have more than been developed. Talk to me a little bit about, I'm sorry, we're going to take the spotlight off you for a second. Uh, talk to me a little bit about Tukani. Right. Tukani. Would you like to see Tukani? Yeah, let's have a... Okay, okay well, I'm going to pop Polly. She can just sit on my hat there for a little while. Polly, you be a good girl. Yeah, no, you just sit there and there we go. And I'll just bring out Tukani for you. Here's Tukani. And Tukani is basically a toucan and a boy. Yeah. And he's actually designed, not designed, but he's actually written for the slightly younger um, yeah. children. I had a lot of people came up to me and said to me, we love Polly, but my little boy is only four. And, you know, they're quite, as you said earlier, quite adult issues that, yeah. that we're dealing with. Can't you write for younger children? So along came Tukani. And, and he's got a friend, Umpo. And he's got a friend, Umpo. And Umpo is just sitting here behind me as well. And, and they actually deal with issues that are slightly different and mm. aimed and spoken about in a slightly simpler language because mm. obviously I'm, I'm talking to slightly younger children so four to sort of seven eight year olds yeah. and the issues that they have at school and then we have Hetty and she I'm just going to turn around and grab Hetty quickly here she is here's Hetty and here's Hetty she actually is the next age group down they like each other they're good friends these two and Hetty is the sort of two to five year olds. Mm. And she deals with issues like we don't punch, push or pinch. Yeah. You know, sort of things that yeah, you yeah. get with the great noughts and the, sure. and they don't really realise what they're doing, but you you know, you, you sort of bring it to their attention through her stories. And Tukani, well, he has slightly different issues. He deals a lot with litter, he doesn't like litter. Mm. No, he doesn't like you litter at and all. And that's unfortunately something that everybody does. Yeah, but he's come up with some ideas and he, he's hoping that, that they'll get taken up in, in Johannesburg around the schools. When, when do we see... Um, I know that there's another four of the poly books. Yes. Uh, sorry, what's the other four called? Well, basically the other ones that are already in print, there's, there's actually um, the Polly's Inuit Games. Yeah. There's um, Polly's... Mm. I have to think about it now because there's quite a few. Yeah, because there's so there's many Polly's characters. There's Polly's Hogmanay Holiday. Yeah. Um, there's Polly's uh, Green Isle, which is when she goes to Ireland. And I'm currently writing um, Polly Returns to Africa. Okay. Um, so so, so, are, so, so you're basically ago. saying we must invite you back to talk about the other three books in the series. Absolutely. But when do we see Takani's book? 
Okay, Tukani is being illustrated at, at the okay. moment. Uh, okay. So as soon as the illustrations are done, he will be flying into the stores. Okay, great. And Hetty? Hetty is going to... I remembered all your names. That's all weird. Yeah. yeah, no, Hetty, she, she'll actually be coming through a little bit later. Um, I want to launch Tukani first, yeah. and but her books are written, they're just, again, waiting on the illustrations. The illustrations actually take a lot longer than writing. Yeah. Very quickly, having a, having the actual, having Polly come alive mm -hmm. in classroom, Yes. what does that do for the series? What does that do for a child? I think when they see Polly, they want to believe that she's real. And so it makes her whole world come alive, and Tukani's and Hetty's. Their world becomes the children's world. Because it becomes their world, they then take interest in the issues that are being raised within the books and they then want to do something about it. So you get very positive feedback from the kids. Um, even down to the bullying, you know, at one point in, in one of Polly's books, um, I actually sort of explain that she's been bullied um, and then I sort of say to, to the reader, you know, do you know anyone who's been bullied? Mm. Have you been bullied at school? And that's a real life lesson. And it's a way that a parent or a teacher can pick up is something happening that maybe they're not aware about. Um, and also you teach the one, two, three of bullying. We go to, you know, the teacher, the, we go to our parent, or we go to our friends to stand up with us against a bully. So we teach one, two, three. So these all these little issues that sort of come through with Polly. Jan, we're at Tunga. Thank you very much for joining me on the weekly. Thank you. Thank you, Polly. Thank you to Kani. Thank you, Hetty. And the cousins at the back of you. Thank you very much for coming in. And uh, we'll keep our um, our eyes and our ears uh, glued to find out when the other books will be released. But that's the author, Jan Rotunga. Jan, Thank quickly, you. people want to get hold of you. Where can they go? I have a website, www.kidsbookswithoutborders.com. Um, okay. Um, they can get hold of me. My books are in Scoops, which is up in the north. In Monte uh, Cassino, yeah. In Monte Cassino, or I'm in exclusive books right down in the south, in Mall of the South. Otherwise, they can they can get hold of me on my email address, which is janspicksa, J-A-N-P-I-C-S-S-A, mm. at gmail.com. Very right, simple as that. Simple as that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Grandlive.co.za Yes, 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 who got brands talking? Grandlive.co.za